Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. For this video, we're going to be continuing our tutorial series on how to create a multiplayer game using the Photon 2 plugin in Unity. For this lesson, we're going to be talking about player movement and how to synchronize player movement across the network. So let's get started. Now before we begin, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updates when we publish new videos. All right, so here we have our project from last time open inside of Unity. And the first thing I'm going to do is set up our player avatar to synchronize its movement across the network. And so I'm going to go to our resource photon prefabs folder. I'm going to select our player avatar game object. Now the creators of the Photon plugin have done an excellent job with creating their own component that allows you to synchronize an object's transform across the network. And that is called the Photon Transform View. And so with this object selected, we're going to add that component. We're going to click on the Add Component drop-down menu, and we're going to type in Photon Transform, and then select the Photon Transform View. Now this component allows you to synchronize the position, the rotation, and the scale of a game object. And for now, we're just going to leave it at the position and rotation. Now this component does an excellent job at smoothing out the changes in a transform across the network. But sometimes it won't do everything that you need it to do, and sometimes it'll even do too much. For example, with our snake cube game, we didn't want our snake to travel along the cube in a smooth motion. We kind of wanted it to have a step to it where it would be in one position and then the next and then the next and the next. And so we actually didn't use this component. Instead, we just sent the position of the head of the snake across the network using an RPC call. But for this tutorial, this component will do the job. We're then going to select this component and drag it into the observed components field of our photon view. Now the reason why we need to do this is because you can think of the photon view as being like our doorway to the network. And so our photon transform view doesn't actually do any networking. Instead, it just handles the mathematics. And so we need to be able to pass those values into the photon view, which can then synchronize them across the network. Now there's one more component that we want to add to our player avatar, and that is a character controller component. So I'm going to type in character controller and select that component. Once we have that component on there, we can then go ahead and create a player movement script. So I'm going to go to our scripts photon game controller folder, and I'm going to right click, go to create C sharp script, and I'm going to type player movement. And I'm going to open it up in Visual Studios. Now the really cool thing about the Photon Transform view is because that component is synchronizing all the changes within our transform across the network, we can really just create any old player movement script and it'll do all the work for us. We don't really have to send any messages because that component will take care of everything. Now the first thing I'm going to do in this script is add some variables. And so the first one is going to be for our photon view and I'm going to type private photon view and it's not recognized. So I'm going to click on it, hold alt and press enter. And then going to select using photon.pun. I'm then going to call this PV. And the next one is going to be a private character controller. And I'm going to call this one my CC. The next one is going to be a public float, and this is going to be movement speed. And the next one is going to be a public float, and we're going to call this one rotation speed. Now let's go ahead and initialize our photon view and our character controller. So within the start function, I'm going to type PV equals get component, and then we're going to pass in photon view and then parentheses, semicolon. The next line is going to be my CC equals get component, and we're gonna pass in character controller, and then parentheses, semicolon. Now for this tutorial, let's just create some basic FPS movement. And so I'm gonna start with the WASD. So let's scroll down and create a new function. So I'm gonna type void, and this one is just going to be called basic movement. Now the first thing that we need to do inside this function is check for the player's input. So I'm going to say if input dot get key, and then I'm going to pass in key code dot w. So if they're pressing w, we want them to walk forward. 
And so we're going to use our character controller variable to move our game object. So I'm going to say my CC dot move and the value that we're going to pass in will be the forward direction of our transform. So I'm going to say transform dot forward and I'm going to multiply that by time dot delta time and I'm going to multiply that by our movement speed. And then I'm going to copy this if statement and I'm going to paste it three more times. One, two, three. And then all we have to do is change the letter value. So I'm going to say A and this one will be S and this one will be D. And then we need to change the direction. So for A, this one will be right, but we need to add a negative sign in front of it. So we move left. This one will be forward, but negative. So we move back and then this one will be right. Now I'm going to create a function to handle our rotation and in this tutorial we're only going to deal with the rotation of the y-axis or the horizontal rotation. And so I'm going to type void and we're going to call this function basic rotation and then the first thing that we need to do is get the player's input of their mouse's movement. And so we're going to say float and we can call this one mouse x and we're going to set it equal to input dot get axis and we're going to pass in the string value of mouse space x. We can then multiply this by our time dot delta time and multiply that by our rotation speed. Now all we have to do is use this value to rotate our transform. So I'm going to type transform dot rotate rotate and I'm going to pass in a new vector 3 and the values are going to be 0 for x and then mouse x for y and then it's going to be 0 for z and then we can leave it with a semicolon. Now the last thing that we need to do is call these functions within the update function and we first want to check to make sure that we are the local player so I'm going to say if pv dot is mine is true and if it's true then we're going to call the basic movement function and we're going to call the basic rotation function. Now we can go ahead and save our script and go back to unity. Now let's go ahead and build our game. Once our game is finished building, I'm going to hit play in the standalone and play in Unity. I'm then going to click the battle button, which will load us into the multiplayer scene. And here you can see that our player has rotation and he also has movement. Let me scroll out. And he moves in the direction that he's facing. So I'm only pressing W and whichever way I'm rotated, he then moves in that direction. But if I hit one of the other keys, so let's say A, he then moves to the left and D, he moves to the right and S he moves backwards. So pretty cool. And it's all dependent on which direction he's facing. Now let's go over to our standalone and I'm going to hit battle. And here you can see that we now have two objects. And when I move this one, when I move our standalone, you can see that it moves in both the standalone and the editor. Now the movement speeds might be a little fast. So let's go ahead and close these and I'm going to change those values. So let's say 100 was pretty high, let's say 25, and then maybe just, uh, I don't know, 500 was pretty good for rotation, maybe 300. Okay, let's do another build. So here we have our game reloaded and you can see that the rotation speed and the movement speed is much more manageable. And so all you have to do is play around with the movement speed and the rotation speed variables to get it to where you think it'll work for your game. And there you go, we were able to synchronize player movement across the network and your personal input only controls the characters you own. Now if you like this video and you found it to be helpful, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also subscribe to our channel so you can get updates whenever we publish new videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs>